Hello and welcome to Affliction Sugarcoated, a podcast where we sugarcoat some of the world's so-called afflictions and rate its plausibility out of a scale of 1 to 5. I'm Minnie Kim, and today we will be sugarcoating the World Cup of 2022. Okay, so the 2022 World Cup. It's been a long journey. Um, as a person who has a country to cheer on, on during the World Cup, it has certainly been a long ride, and it has been absolutely amazing. Is it only me, or does everyone feel like the 2022 World Cup kind of is going a little bit unexpectedly? I mean, we all expected Argentina to rise to the top. We didn't expect Brazil to fall down, and we didn't expect a whole lot of other things that I'll cover later on, but we can all agree that it yielded some shocking results. And since I am a huge soccer fan, I feel like I need to summarize every single World Cup result, so bear with me if you already know all of these, or you can just skip if you feel like you want to get to the other parts. So, I'll start with the round of 16, because if I don't, then I'll just go on and on and on for about five minutes. So, let's start. The round of 16 started with Netherlands and the USA. Netherlands won. And then, um, over on the other side was Argentina and Australia. Argentina won, and the Netherlands and Argentina was in the qualified for the quarterfinals then japan and croatia um croatia won brazil and south korea brazil won so croatia and japan qualified oh croatia and brazil qualified for the quarterfinals then was france and poland in which france won Then came England and Senegal, England won, and England and France qualified for the quarterfinals. Then came Morocco and Spain, in which Morocco won, and Portugal and Switzerland, in which Portugal won, and Morocco and Portugal qualified for the quarterfinals. And then, let's get to the quarterfinals now. The Netherlands and Argentina. The Netherlands won, Croatia and Brazil Croatia won, and then those two countries qualified for the semifinals. Then was England and France. France won. Uh, Morocco and Portugal. Morocco won, which was also a shocker. And by the way, Brazil losing was also a huge, huge, absolutely huge shocker. And then those two, France and Uh, Morocco qualified for the semifinals. Morocco, absolutely amazing. I believe first African country to qualify for the semifinals, or was it the quarterfinals? Like, something like that. And then came Argentina and Croatia. Argentina won, qualifying for the finals. France and Morocco, and France won, qualifying for the finals. And now comes Argentina and France, and since I'm filming this before the World Cup ends, I do not know who is going to win. And why am I recording this when I could just wait like a week or so for the final results? Because I'm traveling, and I don't want to carry my mic everywhere. But, like, there's a fun in betting. Like, we all know that soccer is one of those games like one of those sports matches where you just have to bet like it's just the rule okay if anyone's not betting on the world cup please do it is absolutely amazing it's so fun especially like these days this world cup it's been full of twists so no one can really predict what's happening that's also the magic of soccer even though the team may be strong even though they might perform well like a year ago or a year or two ago it can change really really fast and i think that's what happened in some of these cases as you can see i think some of the um most surprising ones were 
Let's see. I mean, hmm, every um the round of sixteen was pretty. Uh, we could have guessed everything, I think. And then the quarterfinals was when a lot of shockers came. So Brazil lost, and uh, Portugal also lost. And that was Cristiano Ronaldo's last World Cup, so that was very, very sad. And I think the semifinals, Morocco could have won, but France won. I think it was kind of expected, yet kind of not expected in a way, because if they have such a big winning streak, why not? Why stop it now? So, but anyways, France won, and now Argentina and France are going to face it off. If it goes to penalties, uh, I think Argentina will win. But if not, I think France will win. I mean, Kylian Mbappe is a shining star. He's a rising star, and Messi is considered one of the greatest players. And I'm personally leaning to France, cause just cause I like France. <laughs> and this is another form of betting, right? We'll see what happens. If I'm wrong, oh well. But if I had to choose one specific winner, I think France. I believe France. And overall, yeah, that's how I think will happen. Why do I think? France will win. I mean, skill-wise, we know that France is a brilliant team. We know that Argentina is a brilliant team as well, but, like, I I believe that Messi kind of carries the team. I don't want to really say that if it wasn't for Messi, Argentina would never have made it this far, but he is a brilliant player, and I think without him, there would have been some changes in results. But anyways... I have this bet in my advisory. Well, kind of more of had a bet in advisory. So it was, it went like we each chose a country and out of all the countries who, whichever came last would buy a bunch of snacks, right? And the majority bet on Brazil, in fact, but then, and then like two each, bet on Argentina and France. I was the one who bet on France. And yeah, the losers had to buy a whole bunch of snacks for us. But when Brazil lost to Croatia, people were shocked. I mean, if people are listening to this like a while later, then they won't realize how shocked people were when Brazil lost. Like, they were doing absolutely amazing for the first three rounds, right? And, like, generally, Brazil is considered a very, very strong team. It has been from, like, I think the very beginning. I don't think Brazil was ever, like, a terrible team. I mean, not that there are any terrible teams, but they were generally considered a good team, like, ever since the beginning, right? And Brazil, yeah, they were a strong candidate. I don't think anyone knows what happened that day. Um, Like, I watched the game, by the way. It was very, very shocking. Um, You don't know that this is one of those lessons where it teaches you that you don't know what is going to happen in soccer. It's just unpredictable. It can go sideways it can go like a mile from where you think it would have gone and that's kind of the fun in it right and everyone was shocked also in the case of saudi arabia and argentina when we first heard the news um my entire school my entire like everyone around me thought that argentina had completely lost it we thought that like messi's reign was over and stuff like that But then they picked up, and now they're in the finals, so obviously his reign isn't over, although it is his last World Cup. And yeah, those were some of the shockers in this World Cup, and I enjoyed it personally. In the end, it's just a soccer match. And don't get me wrong, I'm not underestimating soccer. It's like literally my favorite sport. But I've stayed up multiple days watching the games, 
and I have seen thousands and thousands of people in the stadiums, and it's amazing the lengths people will go to to watch those games. Right? They had to go to they had to fly to Qatar. Some of them must have missed like work or school or their family or stuff like that. But there were people, and let me tell you, there were a lot of people. So you might be wondering why is the World Cup featured in an Depressing in a depressing show like this, like this is a place where missing school or people dying and stuff like that are sheer coded. So why does this need sheer coding? I mean, we can all agree that we've had terrible days during this World Cup. Whenever your country loses, that's obviously a terrible day. When Cristiano left his last match crying in the World Cup, that was also a sad moment. And thousands of fans crying after the loss of their country, that is also not the best thing to watch. And it's unbelievable the sorrow it takes to see the people you adore lie down on the grass in disappointment. Some of the players often cry once they lose their match because soccer is like that. It's a game that has a clear winner and a clear loser. And since there are only two, there either you will be a winner or a loser. And there's no second place, no third place. It's just you two in the spotlight. In the end, only one remains. That is fun and it is thrilling and it is fun but only when you're when your team wins which come to think of it doesn't happen all that often the loser is too often looked over they are forgotten and when a team grabs the trophy and celebrates. I mean, they're at the top of their world right now. Some of them, it's the best moment of their lives. But we can't help but notice the other team standing and just completely destroyed and devastated. One side of the crowd cries and hugs enjoyed while the other falls down in despair. That's how it works with a lot of games, with a lot of competitions, with most competitions. I, for one, like competitions, but when it comes to soccer, there, there's a sentimentality. There's always something sentimental that kind of stops people in the tracks. For this World Cup, it is the last... World Cup for some of the best players we've ever seen, like Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, I believe Neymar, and so on. It is kind of sad. If we look at that, it is indeed devastating. And since we're not pro soccer, not everyone is pro soccer players, we can't do anything about it. And we cheer people on but sometimes that's just not enough sometimes it's just pressure and i as a person who stayed up all night watching the world cup couldn't help but notice that and i'm here to accentuate it before we get into sheer coding i'd just like to correct my mistake um it is it turns out that it's not Neymar's last World Cup. I mean, he denied that it was his last World Cup after the knockout round. So hopefully it isn't because I think we would all like to see one of the best best players in the world um, at the top of his world. Okay, now let's get on to the short coding. Once you go to one of the stadiums and cheer the team on, you won't believe how big the noise is. Like, the noise is unbelievable. It's inconceivable. I mean, just being there would, like, 
screaming and cheering on your team. That's that's amazing. That takes a lot of effort. And when thousands of people are doing that all in once, it literally rings throughout the entire stadium. And to be honest, I feel kind of sorry for the people who live near. I think it would reach them and prevent them from like taking rest and sleeping and stuff like that, right? Because everyone is screaming at the top of their lungs. The World Cup is one of the few moments when an entire country is at a consensus. Things become united. It doesn't matter the political party, the what you like better, what's like ethical questions and whatnot. Those things kind of sliver away. And I know that we're in midst of a global pandemic that people say is going to end, but it just doesn't seem to. We're in the midst of war, a war that is turning up to be quite deadly, especially with the winter coming. We're in the midst of some really hard times, right? But it's still Christmas. It's still nearing Christmas. And it's still uh, the happy holidays, especially with the World Cup on. That would be an amazing holiday, right? What I'm trying to say is that things become united. And that's admirable. Simply put, soccer is merely a game of putting a medium-sized ball into a goal as a team, only using their feet. That seems hard, but once you get used to it, it's fine. (laughs) Once again, it is something to admire. It is a thing of beauty, but we know because we know that soccer is so much more than that, because we know that it's a source of union, companionship, and glory. And yes, it's also a source of hatred, rivalry, and grudges, but the first three outweighs the latter, in my opinion. The World Cup shows the power of representation and pride. Every country is literally representing an entire nation and pouring their heart and soul and sweat and tears and blood into getting this ball into the net. Not, sorry, not the net, the goal. And I like to think the goal as what it literally reads, goal. What are our goals for 2023? What are our goals for the near future, for the for the deep future, right? We can never predict anything in this world, just like the World Cup. We can try, but usually if it turns out that way, then good for you, but sometimes it doesn't. That's how the world works. And that's something to think about while watching the finals, right? I mean, I get it. I obviously think that you should enjoy it, You should, like, cheer your team on if it's there. You should be able to do whatever you want. But the beauty of soccer is that it never dies. I mean, I don't even know which World Cup this is, right? It's been here for a very long time. We've had countless stars, and then we keep saying they're the best, one of the best we've ever had in this world. But then... We know that someday another great soccer player will will come. We know that it won't be soon because we'll be too busy reminiscing about the old soccer players who were so incredibly good and now the soccer is not so good anymore. But we know that one day we'll forget a little bit about them. Not forget them, but put them aside and crown the new best player of the world. And we just have to wait for that, not cry and feel sorry about ourselves or any of that. As a team gets awarded a golden trophy that others would literally kill to get, let us appreciate that, whoever it may be, whether it be France 
or Argentina, I will respect that team because they are the winners. And whoever loses won't get the most spotlight, but they'll still have, there will be some reminiscent light shone on them. So here's to the 2022 World Cup. I give the share coding of the World Cup a 4.5. This podcast was written and produced by me, Minnie Kim. If you have any comments or reviews, please feel free to write any and all thoughts on your podcast reviews. If you'd like to suggest an affliction for me to share code, please email me via afflictionssurecoded at gmail.com. Again, that's afflictionssurecoded at gmail.com. The holidays are nearing. Hooray. Hope you had a nice time, and I will be back with a new episode after the World Cup. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.